Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ankush. In this lecture, we are going to learn about how you can run your Spark application on the Hadoop cluster. So usually as a Spark developer or Hadoop developer, we do our development in our local only. So we will have our local Windows machine where we will have your ID. Maybe you are using the PyCharm or maybe you are using IntelliJ or maybe you are using the Visual Studio. So we do our development there. And then finally, we are moving our code from our local to the Hadoop server. So how we are running those application on the Hadoop cluster, that's what we are going to learn with this video. Before I show you this thing practically, I just want to tell you that I'm going to start my Hadoop Spark training from the 10th of this uh, February. So we have just one week. So from next week, I'm going to start my Hadoop Spark training. If you are looking for to start your career as a big data data engineer, then reach out, you can definitely reach out to me. So let's see this thing practice. So here you can see on my screen that I have one created one application, which is basically checking my uh, row number dense rank. You must have heard about the analytical function. So this function is already ready. Let me run this. So you can consider that this is my local machine where I'm running my spark application. And once I run my this Spark application, it is giving me the required result. But this code is not running on Hadoop cluster at this point. So what I will do, I, I will tell you in this example that how I can move this analytical function or this PySpark application to the Hadoop cluster. And from Hadoop cluster, how are you going to see this output? So when I'm running it locally, I have tested it. Okay, now I can see I'm getting a correct result. So it is a time to move this to the Hadoop cluster. So here I can see the code has been executed and it has given me the output regarding the ranking function. Okay. So what is the ranking function and everything that we are going to see in the next lecture. But at this point, we need to understand that this application I have run it from the windows. Now let me do one thing. Let me take a copy of it. Copy the path. You can just copy the path from here. And we are going to use a WinSCP software through which uh, we are going to move our the complete project to our Hadoop cluster. So this is the IP address of my Hadoop. Let me log in here. All right, so let me double click on it. And this is my Python project. So here I can see all my files are there related to the Pythons, okay? These are the Py files. Py files means where we are, code has been written. So let me do one thing, let's say, uh, this Python project itself I am moving so let me move it from here let me go back just drag it and drop it to the location wherever you want to drop it so in my case I can see that the project is already available on my Hadoop cluster so let me close that okay now let me go there I'm just checking whether my all the services are running yes it is there let me clear the screen now if you go here and do L this is my project this is the main directory where my all the projects are available so it is in python project 2 and what i'm going to do i'm going to run this function analytical function dot py now how to run this job by using the yarn you know one thing that whenever we are running the job on the hadoop server we generally use yarn as a resource manager so yarn is something our resource manager which will provide you the number of resources yarn so this yarn will be like which will be always available on your hadoop cluster and most of the industries are using that one only okay now this is a spark submit command which we can use spark 2 also we can use spark submit command which will ask you the resource manager in our case the resource manager is yarn the deployment is cluster so there are two deploy modes are there cluster and local so you can use uh, usually in production environment they will use cluster only uh, here you can use the driver memory executor memory and executor cores let's say you want to uh, provide any jar file so you can provide the jar file from here sometimes you need we are using some third party jar file so by using hyphen hyphen jar you can specify your jar file over here now let me do one thing let me use spark submit spark submit hyphen hyphen master yarn 
and rest of the things i'm not going to use like number of executors and everything because i'm running it locally and i just need to specify my python file that's it so i can see that hyphen hyphen master master spelling is mistaked let me run it one more time now it has started running your job with the help of yarn resource manager and this is how you can submit your spark application in your production environment or development environment wherever you are running as a spark application spark submit is really important so if you know the spark submit it is always good idea to know more about the things here you can also see the tracking urls so if you see this tracking url you can see the progress by using the gui part also spark ui you will get it over here so usually what we do we just copy that path and paste it into the browser and we can see the content over here so it will take some time to get the resources currently i can see it was in accepted state earlier now i can see the output yes it is coming so this is the output it is the same output that we saw on our windows but obviously windows we are not going to use in our uh, development area right so just to develop the things you can use your pycha but when you want to push it to the cluster level you need to use like this okay all right i hope this is clear if you have any question queries anything we can definitely discuss and if you are looking for spark and hadoop training you can reach out to me bye bye